All right. So thanks everyone yesterday for uh, all the really good suggestions on this. Now, for me personally, there is legitimately a use for this. Obviously, the way I knocked it up yesterday <laughs> was just to test it. I would want this, you know, like I would want this switch mounted inside of a box where I can just... Like, that's pretty easy to do. You know, I flip on two buttons on my amp. There's a third one. And then I don't have to wrestle the cables in and out every time. They just end up on the floor. I like things to be tidy and just to stay the way they are. So I would just put this pedal right up on the top. I wouldn't even have it on the floor. I'd just turn it on and off with my hand. That's just personally the way I use it. I'm just a home user. I'm not out gigging. And I, uh, you know, I hope that while this may not be of any personal use to you and you might not understand even why you would want something like this, to me, personally, as a home user, it's useful. Anyway, uh, somebody made the good suggestion yesterday of just skipping the whole, um, you know, attaching that to the inner, inner battery uh, uh, terminal. Um, which, for a few reasons, I still like because it's universal. That's what made me think of it. Also, I just happen to have a package of those laying around that I bought at an electronics shop because I needed one a really long time ago and this is universal so no it's not the best design and in some pedals especially like this it's gonna pinch the wire so you know a bit of shielding some sort of protection here to protect these wires and clean this up and I still think I can make that as is a little bit better of a unit but uh, that said so I went looking through my you know just bin of stuff um, to see if I, I had one of these kicking around. And I do. And it's the right end. So she fits. Um, but it was, it's the wrong. So this pedal wants negative on the inner. Uh, on the inside pin and positive on the out. And the good thing about this particular pedal, which I've never seen before, is that it will run on any amount of power between 9 and 18 volts as long as the center pin is negative. So, being that the center pin has to be negative, my plan was really simple. I don't even know what this power supply is from. I know it works, and I know that'll work. So, I just cut it off and I'm just going to reverse these wires so that the center is negative. And then I'll just give it a quick test and we'll see what's what. So, stand by. Hopefully this should be nice and easy and hopefully it'll work. Alright, so I was a bit stupid because I cut this before I came up with the plan that I have right now. But that's alright. It's not the end of the world. So... I was just watching a video the other day about uh, NASA wiring, NASA spec wiring. Now, I'm, uh, I haven't got quite enough wire cut off to, to do it to their actual spec, but I have enough wire to, I have enough to I have enough to sort of mimic the the mechanics of it. That should do it. Slip a bit of this onto here. Slip a bit of that onto there. I always forget this. I always forget. I'm always intend mean to use. this stuff, but I get something soldered and then I forget. But today I didn't forget. I, for I remembered both pieces. Yay for me! Okay, so I'm not exactly sure how you would achieve how you would achieve their 
their method by by pre tinning the wire, but I don't think it makes much of a difference. But basically, you just make a hook on either end, and then twist them around one another. And apparently that's supposed to make for a super stable, very strong connection. And if you do it to their specifications, I think it's three wraps around either side. But I reckon for what we're doing here, this is going to work. Just trying to heat up this wire here, and I'm using the solder as a something to pinch it from the other end to hold it stable. Oh, it's not even on! All that time I thought that thing was heating up, it's not even on. Okay. <laughs> so this is clearly not a NASA spec. If you do it their way, your wraps have to be like concentric and right next to one another and really tightly wrapped. But for my purposes, like I said, I think. Are you even hot, you dirty slut? You're not, are you? I hate you. It's a brand new tip. I hate you. I hate you a lot. You're a dirty, big, fat slot. There you go. There you go. That's all she wrote. Yeah, I think that's gonna work. Nice. Alright. the only way to test this is to plug it in. Alright, so if this is if this is working properly I should be getting So we're good. Okay, so I guess the only other thing is to cross my fingers and hope it works. electronics guy so I'm really pleased about that it seems to check out in every way that it should do which is good for me sits at home with a pretty relatively static setup. I don't like having to pull cables in and out, it drives me crazy because then that shit just sits all over the floor. So obviously the ideal solution is uh, just 
an external power supply, but these are expensive. These can be like 20 or 30 bucks. And I just happen to have a bunch of this shit laying around from old electronics. This one happened to fit the bill size-wise, uh, voltage-wise, and I just needed to reverse the positive and negative so that it was uh, the same as this pedal requires, but yeah. It's awesome. to me and that's that's also that's another reason I didn't want to modify it start drilling holes and shit in it that's what I would do if this was my own pedal if I were if I was really concerned about having that I just thought that project was fun but if this was my pedal I would have drilled a hole into it and just had one end of that with a switch just on the outside on the side of it just mounted the switch somewhere inside on the side of it and off you go Anyway, I hope it was still fun for some of you, and I hope this part of it was fun, and I should be back with a proper guitar project uh, any day now.